Welcome to the Build a Glamping Business from the Start Show. I'm Carrie. And I'm Augusta. And we're going to show you how to do glamping from the ground up. That's right. Follow along as we build our business in the fantastic world of glamping. Hello and welcome to the Build a Glamping Ground from the Start Show. If you've already watched some of our episodes, you know that um, a little while ago we did one on planning and zoning. And we've decided that um, giving you a little more information about how to look up that property um, might be very beneficial for you. Um, so today we're going to talk about in-depth planning and zoning searches when you're looking for the property or if you already own a property and want to know if um, you can start a glamping ground on that property. So um, we're going to walk through that as Carrie shares her screen um, step by step. So hang on and at the end we will um, give you some pretty good tips for um, successfully navigating the government system of property ownership. Let's get started. So we are going to do this from the beginning to the end. And go ahead and tell us what you're doing here, Carrie, what you're looking at. Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm on Zillow. It's just a pretty easy um, real estate website to navigate. It isn't always what we would recommend using, but Zillow is usually pretty current. Um, and what I've done is there's a particular piece of property that I'm interested in. So I've, um, and I know that it's within Adams County, which you can see right here is outlined. Um, so I just went ahead and searched Adams County and then my filters are for sale. Um, I didn't really put a price in here, so it's kind of open-ended. And then um, under this section, you can choose as many things as you want to, but I'm just selecting land so that it um, filters out. I don't necessarily want land on a house, although that is an option that we'll talk about in a different show. Um, for our purposes today, I'm just gonna narrow it down to lots and land and then um, done. And so this search is pulled up these listings, it's got, um, it says it has 85 agent listings and then six other listings. Your 85 agent listings are typically going to be um, active pieces of property that are actively for sale on the MLS, which is the multiple listing service that all realtors use. And then typically these six other listings are going to be property that's for sale by owner. Um, you can also get into some kind of scam type things under these other listings. So be really careful what you're looking at. Um, so for today, we're just going to look at the 85 agent listings. So I actually had an address in mind that I had driven past and I saw a for sale sign. So I'm going to scroll down and show you which property that is. It's this piece of property right here. Um, it's 2.52 acres. And um, I really wanted to see if I could get the actual address because that's kind of important for what we're gonna show you how to do today. So this does have an address and it is active on the MLS. You can see right here where it's listed. And then um, this is gonna be the realtor group that is representing it. So we're gonna click on this one and... Beautiful choice, beautiful. Gorgeous, yeah. I can totally picture a glamp ground here. It's nice and flat. It's got beautiful views um, and it is for sale. So we'll use this one. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this address and just do it just like this. And Augusta is gonna tell us where to take it from here. All right, so whatever county you live in, city, um, typically the counties maintain the zoning um, but there are places that if you're um, within a city limits on these, um, you're going to have to consider um, searching both, both entities, the city and the county. Um, this one happens to be an unincorporated county area. So um, what we're gonna do is just do a quick search for, um, this is Adams County. So Adams County property um, search. we go and if you do that quick search it really is the easiest way to not have to dig through 
um, a lot of different links um, to find it. So here we are, we've got parcel account, street number and a permit number. We don't have any information other than that street number. So we're gonna use that. Just click into that and then type in the street number down there in the search value. And if we go to that, this brings up all of the properties in Adams County um, that start with 193, uh, 13945 with all the different streets. So now you got to find the street. So um, they're alphabetical order on this particular site. Oh, there it is down there at the bottom. So you're going to want to click on that parcel number to the left. And this brings us into the residential property profile. Um, this is going to give you all the information you could possibly want on a particular lot or, or piece of land, um, including the parcel number, which, you know, if you um, want to do more research later, you might want to jot that down. Sometimes it's easier to find this information by the parcel number. It tells you who currently owns that property and what the legal address of it is. Um, it would tell you the address because if you're searching by a parcel number, um, you wouldn't have that necessarily have that address. So it, it gives you that information. If you click into the account summary, and by the way, all of this information is public information. Um, every time a, a property um, becomes zoned, particularly, um, they do one of these sheets for it. And that I have noticed is pretty consistent across the country. Um, this gives you the legal description, your block number, your lot number, what subdivision it's in. Um, sometimes those get pretty long um, and it's not super relevant information um, until you're applying for a permit. Um, the subdivision plat, a plat is um, basically a map of, um, of subdivisions. It gives you your account number, which is the tax um, the tax department's information, um, everybody has an account number so that they know where to apply those tax numbers. The date that it was added as its own, own entity for paying taxes on the tax district and the mill levy. Um, if you're super concerned about how much tax you're gonna pay, you might wanna pay attention to those things. Um, beyond that, you will click into, you can click into the permits that have been pulled for that property. Um, each of those um, letters at the beginning tells you it's a, an abbreviation for what type of permit was pulled. Um, right after that is the year that it was pulled and then what permit number um, in that entity it was. So um, HSC is typically historical. So it's gonna tell like um, how that property started off, how it got divided out. Um, I's are usually inspections, um, T's are sometimes um, utilities, that type of thing, ULT's are utilities, um, SWR is sewer. Um, each entity may make that a little bit different. Um, you can click into those and see what more information on them. We're not going to go into that a lot right now. There's a building permit, it's usually BLV which would mean that there's probably some type of building on that property already. Um, sales summary, which is stuff I find particularly fascinating. This property um, became its own um, parcel in 2005 and was sold from a grantor to a grantee for the amount of $10. And the deed type is um, a quit claim deed. Um, those deed types um, vary whether you've got paid cash for it, pay, um, have a mortgage, quit claim, um, all of those things. Um, and each, each owner throughout that process of um, how that's happened. So um, you can look into that further if you want to. To me, it's just good background knowledge. Um, this property went from $10 to $10, which is what it costs to file a quit claim deed in this county. Um, to 88,000, to 90, to 150. And if you request, if you remember right, the um, zoo, the ad for it is, is 300,000. 
and she this person has owned it since April of this this year so um, for whatever reason this property suddenly just jumped um, exponentially in, in cost um, I happen to know that there's a lot of building going on over there so um, I'm guessing that it's gotten approval to be built upon now. As you see, there's a clerk and recorder search page. You can actually go and see the signed documents in there. Um, we're not going to go into that today because it doesn't really, it's not really applicable to what we're talking about. The valuation summary just below that is going to tell you um, what the assessed value and the actual value of the property is. So as you see, she's only charging, they're only charging about $25,000 over um, what the county has that um, actual value at. Assessed value is the amount you're going to pay taxes on. So if the assessed value matches the actual value, um, you're going to pay a lot of taxes on that per year. Um, you need to, you know, take that into account with your business plan for um, profits and, and outgoing money. Um, and you, if you get a mortgage on it, you need a loan to buy that property. Um, that's going to uh, come into play whether um, you're approved for that or not. Um, if you And then you can go into, do you see where it says improvement subtotal? There's no improvements on this property. So it's literally an empty amount of land. Um, the building summary tells you basically the same thing. Um, there's no building records found on that property. So nobody's ever pulled a permit. They don't have any um, records of even a shed being built on this property. Tax summary, which we won't go into, is basically the same thing. Half the taxes been paid and how much those taxes were per year. Enterprise zone summary, um, it's false. There's no enterprise zoning on this property, which then you go, well, if there's not one there, can, are we going to be allowed to do any kind of business on this property? You click into the precincts and legislative representative summary. This tells you who your commissioner is, your house district, senate district, and um, congress representative district is. Um, you can click into those. We're not going to get into that. It's all political. Um, but if this property did not allow you to um, do what you want to do on it, you could potentially go through that chain and file to have an exemption or change the zoning. Um, you're getting really expensive at this point, and you're probably just better off to find a different property. Um, below this um, representative box is your zoning summary. Now, this is the part we really need to know. What is this property zoned? This particular property is zoned RE. RE is residential estate in this county. Each, each uh, jurisdiction, each place is going to have slightly different zoning um, abbreviations for the lack of better terms. Um, residential estate in this county means that it's a larger property for a larger house. Um, isolated outside of a large subdivision. So a little more privacy. Sometimes there's agricultural uses allowed, um, but are extremely limited. You know, they might say you can have one or two horses, you could, you know, have a, a large garden, that kind of thing that wouldn't be allowed in um, a closely grouped subdivision and residential area. So now we need, now that we know what the zoning for this is, um, we need to know what is allowed on a residential estate property. And by the way, there's a, for this county, there's R is residential, C is commercial, I is industrial. Um, and then there's, there's planned units that are, that start with a P. So we need to know what is Adams County's restricted uses for um, a residential estate property. So it's going to require another search because that's the easiest way their um, website makes it super difficult to find some things. So we just go do an, a secondary search and this search is going to say um, allowed uses for properties in Adams County. Okay, so development standards and regulations should take us where we need to go. 
Oh, yep. I happen to know that this one is, um, it is chapter three, zone district regulations. So we're gonna click into that. This brings us to a rather large document. For those of you that are a little more computer savvy, you know that control F and then you can type for certain parameters and find those. So we're gonna type for um, residential estate in here and we're gonna take a look at what, what they have to say about it. Also, you can tell that this is the most current. Um, these do tend to change year to year. So this is December of 2020. Um, we are currently in October of 2021. There is nothing more current than this one. So um, come December 2021, it may change. So you come into this chart. This chart um, tells you your zone district, uh, minimum lot sizes for those zone districts, um, what is required as far as well, wastewater treatment systems, can you be on the public or sewer? All your setbacks are in here. Um, the setbacks are important to know because if you are buying one acre and everything has to be 30 feet back from the sides, that will substantially limit how many, um, how many different areas you can set up on there. Um, and they will do this because um, if they need to put in a street right away, areas are covered typically in that setback area. And trust me, measure it out and draw it out in your plot that you are aware of those. It'll save you a lot of time for your permit process. Um, these ones aren't terrible, but um, it is. it does take up a lot of that area. So now, okay, we understand and setbacks where, you know, say that this is all good for us. Now we need to know, is the campground allowed here? So um, along with our residential estate search there, we could just add the word campground, no nothing. So, okay, I guess we're gonna have to scroll through it. I think and, if we try mm -hmm. use table. Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe, okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So this is, brings us to a chart that tells us um, our agricultural businesses and farming operations allowed on what properties. So as you can see, you've got C, P, um, P, C. There's some different things. So um, for this particular use, um, a C stands for commercial. So it's allowed on commercial agricultural properties. Um, farm animals are allowed by permit. Uh, animal feeding operations that is allowed. Oh, it's a conditional use. I'm sorry, not commercial conditional use permit. Um, and sometimes you don't. Okay, conditional use and it's permitted. You don't need a permit. It is permitted by the zoning of that property. Um, and so now we want to go, we want to find what we want to do. So there are several different ways you could set this up. We outdoor, um, <clears throat> outdoor entertainment. It could be a short term rental. You could do it under campground. Um, I think as, as this um, industry grows, you'll start seeing glamping um, be one of these in here. Mm -hmm. So, um, for ours, there's outdoor uses, right? Okay, so we've got um, picnic areas, nature areas, recreation-oriented parks. Um, those are um, permitted on certain mm -hmm. properties. These charts get really, really big. This one is, um, I think, 30 pages long because they cover so many different potential uses of a property. Um, but as you can see in that RE line, a bed and breakfast might be allowed. Um, it is permitted, but what does, or it's conditional use. So what does that look like? Mm -hmm. a, condition, a commercial campground is not allowed. Um, camps, campsites, recreational vehicle parks, tents, trailer parks, none of those things are allowed here. I'm already thinking this is probably not going to be a great property for what we're what we want. Um, mm -hmm. 
So as you, as I'm digging through this, at this point, I would probably stop and say, you know, I don't think I want to go through all the work to do this um, on this property. The neighbors probably aren't going to be real happy if I do that, and they're going to make things very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to search and I'm going to find another property. We're going to stop there today. That's a lot of information to absorb. Um, but if you find a property, start there, dig through, see if it's going to be an allowed use. And um, in our next episode, we'll walk you through that permitting process. One thing that we've learned through uh, working with governments um, is to... <laughs> hot tip of the day it's to definitely get it in writing so <clears throat> one of the things that Augusta and I have come across actually quite frequently more often than not is that depending on who you're talking to at the county and the zoning office you may get lots of different answers it kind of depends on their experience level um, their, their own knowledge base and it can get you into a lot of trouble because if somebody tells you verbally, yeah, that's allowed, you can go ahead and do that and then you go ahead and do it, um, it might not have been allowed and that's going to come back to bite you in the end. So we recommend getting everything in writing and that can be paper form if that's what you want. Um, you know, during COVID, Augusta and I have done um, emails. Those are fine too. Emails are admissible with the date and the time. As long as they're on there, that's a great way to go. Just have something in writing so that you're covered um, should that ever come up. Yep. Join us next time and uh, we'll go through that permit permitting profit process with you. And yep. you can see that um, you know, you're going to want to figure out how to choose which category you're going to file those under and such. And um, we can certainly help you narrow that down. So in yeah, the meantime, absolutely. Yeah, Join ask us. us your questions. Yeah, Definitely ask questions. Your questions. Maybe we can cover that in the next episode. Any questions that pop up, um, mm -hmm. like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening in on those podcast channels. Take a look at our Facebook page. And uh, we've got an Instagram, Facebook, all kinds of podcasts out there. So um, like and follow us though for the most up-to-date information. Yeah, thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.